Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I'll be reviewing my first Lego Harry Potter set. This is the Rise of Voldemort, set number 75965, and it came with 184 pieces and retailed for $20. It also was released in 2019, and since there's a lot of inflation between 2019 and 2023, adjusted for inflation, it would retail now for $24.24. So today we are going to determine if that is still a good deal. All right, to start off, let's just have a look at the build of the set. As you can see, this represents the graveyard scene in the fourth movie of the Harry Potter franchise, or the fourth book. And this is where Cedric Diggory dies and Voldemort is brought back to life. So you can see, like, the statue, Tom Riddle's gravestone, a bunch of different other grave sites. And what I really like about this set is how it's, like, on an arch to show, like, it was on a hill and just some groundwork it looks really cool and i like all the different plants and stuff i think it's a very good representation of what we see in the movie all right so now on to the play features so i guess i'll start with the best play feature so the most interesting play feature of all of them and my favorite is the thing you can do to represent the rise of voldemort so if you put voldemort right here and put him under the ground and then you press on this, I think it's supposed to represent a grave stone. If you press on this, he pops out out of the ground to represent the rise of Voldemort. And I just think that's such a cool play feature for such a small set. I do have one problem with, though it's not really a problem, but it just it's something you can't do. You can't have him rise with his wand, because when you do it with his wand, it gets stuck. and doesn't really work, but that's fine, because he doesn't rise with his wand. Wormtail has to give him his wand. Another cool play feature is that they actually have the pot that has all four ingredients to make Voldemort rise. They have, like, the baby Voldemort piece, which I think is a really cool piece to the set. Actually, we'll take a closer look at that with the minifigures. It also has the bone of Tom Riddle, his father. I think that's a cool detail. It also has Wormtail's hand, which is probably one of the darkest pieces in any Lego set, or just representations, because he cuts off his hand. Like, that's really intense for a Lego set. Then it has Harry's blood, which is also very intense for a Lego set. So, yeah, four um, different ingredients to make Voldemort rise, which are all very dark. And another nice play feature is when Harry is restrained to the statue in the movie, you can represent that here by placing him right here. Let's see if I can get him on there. And placing this sky thing or whatever right in front of him and then he's kind of trapped which i think is really cool it's a nice representation of what we see in the movie another cool easter egg i found in this set is on this gravestone here there's a unique sticker of the deathly hallow symbol i'm not really sure what this is supposed to be i mean in the seventh movie they find like ignotus peverall's gravestone and it has this on it but it's not in that grave site I just think this is a cool Easter egg, even though if it's not accurate, it's it's still really cool. I'm glad they included that. They didn't have to do that. But anyway, another really cool sticker in the set is, not to move Harry to see this, but they've stickered Tom Riddle on uh, Tom Riddle's gray site, which is nice, and I'm glad they did that. I'm sure if they didn't do that, they would be criticized for that, because that's an important detail to the set. And that is all the stickers and prints in the set. Really, there's no unique prints except on the minifigures, but yeah, that's it. Well, the first minifigure I'm going to be taking a look at is the Harry Potter minifigure. So here I have to take off the Triwizard Cup and his wand so you can see better. But as you can see, he's in his Triwizard robes, and I think they look really good. Especially on the back, it says Potter with a star, which is a really nice detail, and I'm glad they included that. It's just very nice. And for his double-sided head... I'm pretty sure he has an angry or scared face. I don't remember. Oh, no, he's smiling. That's not very appropriate for the scene he's in, but I guess if you were curious, his other-sided headpiece is a smile. Next up is Harry Potter's nemesis, Lord Voldemort, and baby Lord Voldemort. So I think one of the highlights of the set is definitely that baby Voldemort piece, or I'm sure that's not the accurate term for it, but I think it looks really cool. I'm glad they printed that. It's such a cool piece. But anyway, looking at the real Voldemort, he has a nice robe piece print in the front and on the back. I think he has more. Yeah, he has a robe print on the back, but his robe bottom piece is not printed. It's just black, which is kind of disappointing, but that's okay because he is wearing black robes, so it works. 
and you will not find a double-sided head on Voldemort for obvious reasons. Next up, we have Wormtail, or Peter Pettigrew, and I think this minifigure is great. Like, just look at all that printing. He has torso printing and leg printing of the outfit he was wearing in the movie. And for accessories, he has his wand, and something about his wand hand is it actually has the hand that Voldemort gives him after he cuts off his own hand for Voldemort. And he also has the knife that he cuts off his hand with. Anyway, I just think it's a cool detail that they included a different colored hand to represent that, even though it is very dark. I'm, I'm still surprised that Lego had all these, like, details regarding him cutting off his hand in the set. That's just such a dark scene, and I'm surprised they included that. But anyway, on the back, he has more printing, and it's very nice. And for his double-sided head, I think it's a scared expression. Let me see. And no, he's just normal here. So yeah, he's mad and he is normal. And I really like that printing on his face, showing his, like, buck teeth. It's very detailed and very nice. An obscure minifigure in the set is just a random Death Eater, which is kind of strange. I mean, they could have included, like, Lucius Malfoy or something, but nope, just a random Death Eater, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure. I think this is exclusive to the set. I'm not sure, though. But I think it's really cool. I mean, it can represent anyone, really. It has some nice back printing with the hood. And it has some nice front printing, too. And I think the mask piece or the mask printing is super cool. And the hat is, too. I just think this is a really cool minifigure, even though it doesn't represent anybody in particular. All right, the fifth minifigure in the set. That's right, the fifth. If you've been keeping track, there's been five different minifigures in this $20 set, which is unheard of and such great value, especially with a bunch of them being exclusive and one of them being Voldemort. Like, this is such a good deal for minifigures. And technically this one isn't listed as a minifigure, but it is one, and it's the big statue that holds Harry to the gravestone. And I think it's pretty cool. I like the wings at the back and his little scythe thing. It doesn't have any printing, but I think it's a great addition to the set. So now it's time for my personal opinion of this set. So I've been waiting to tell you guys this, but this is actually my all-time favorite LEGO Harry Potter set that I own. Just because it's such great value for money. Like, five minifigures for $20? Like, when has- that's never happened. Maybe like a long time ago in a battle pack for Star Wars, but like, Harry Potter, that's never happened. This is just such great value. And the build is such a great display model, too. Like, even though it's so small, I have it on display in my room, like, all the time, just because it's such a cool scene. So, overall, my opinion is 10 out of 10. It's just a great set. All right, so for my final evaluation, what is the price per piece? So, when it retailed for $20 in 2019, it was 10.8 cents per piece, which is pretty good. That's about average, but... Now, adjusted for inflation, $24.24, the price per piece would be 13.1, which is not the best, but you get five minifigures and a great build with some big pieces, so I think it's definitely worth it. Although now, if you wanted to buy this set new, it's like $60 online, but I still think it's a great set, and if it was retailing for what it retailed in 2019, it'd just be a steal. This is a phenomenal set. Here you have it, guys. That's my review of set number 75965, The Rise of Voldemort. As I said, I think it's a great set. You should definitely buy it if you can get it for cheaper than maybe like $30 or $35. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.